In this chapter, we will look at uh, different uh, kinds of commodities that exist uh, in the marketplace. In uh, chapter 10, we studied uh, externalities and we said that externality problems can happen when market participants make actions without considering all of uh, the consequences of their actions. So that uh, producers um, don't take into account all costs of production or consumers um, don't take into account all benefits of uh, provision and consumption of uh, uh, the commodity in the marketplace. Uh, in general, we can say that these problems happen when uh, some resources in the real world uh, don't carry a price tag with them. Uh, one way to interpret chapter 10 is that uh, because clean air or space on the roads didn't uh, uh, carry a price tag, anybody could use those resources um, without having to pay for them. Uh, we can say that this property of uh, uh, commodities in the real world is the poor excludability of some resources. Because clean air or space on the road is uh, free of charge, market participants can use them and cannot be excluded from using them. So we, we will distinguish different commodities in the marketplace uh, by whether they are excludable, whether we can exclude uh, people from con uh, consuming them or not. And we will also say that another uh, property, important property of commodities in the marketplace is whether the commodities are rival in consumption or rivalrous in consumption or not. Uh, generally, we will distinguish four kinds of commodities. Private goods, public goods, common resources, and natural monopolies. <coughs> uh, so as I said, the first distinction that we can make is whether a commodity is excludable. Generally, if there is a price tag attached to uh, consumption of a unit of a commodity, we would say that commodities are excludable. Um, only users who pay for the commodity get to use the commodity. If users don't pay, they can be excluded. Rivalry in consumption is the property whereas usage of the resource by one consumer prevents other consumers from using that unit. So we would say that a commodity is a rival in consumption if usage by one consumer um, uh, makes the availability of resource to other consumers or the enjoyability of the resource by other users uh, smaller. So we can, we can uh, draw this uh, table where we have uh, for, and we, we, should, we can think of this table as a spectrum where we can place different kinds of commodities uh, uh, in the market. Uh, in one corner, we would have uh, uh, goods that are both excludable and rival in consumption. These commodities carry a price tag, therefore they are excludable. It is easy to give a unit of the commodity to people who pay and to not give it to people who don't pay. And these commodities are rival in consumption because one unit of the commodity can be only consumed by one person. If one person eats ice cream, other people cannot eat that unit of ice cream. But for some commodities, even though there is a price tag, these commodities may not be rival in consumption. Uh, for example, with uh, KB, uh, cable TV service or internet service or fire protection, 
uh, these services carry a price tag, but we can think that uh, if another household gets connected to the cable TV service, that doesn't diminish the amount available to other households in the city. <coughs> um, and now let's look at some commodities that don't uh, uh, carry a price tag uh, on them. Um, we can say that uh, common resources are goods that are generally available for free, so that uh, it, is hard, it is difficult to exclude any particular person from using them. And even among non-excludable goods, we can distinguish goods rival in consumption or non-rival in consumption. Uh, uh, we would say that fish in the ocean or congested roads are rival in consumption because another driver on, the, on a congested road makes the driving conditions worse for other drivers. But for some services such as national defense or tornado siren, if there is another person in, in, in the country who is being protected by national defense or who can be warned by tornado siren, that doesn't diminish the amount of uh, the service available to others. Okay, and so here the basic idea is that for any commodity in the real world, we should be able to place them in one of these quadrants. And another idea that I want you to keep in the back of your head is that this is not a binary table. This is a really a spectrum. Um, we can have some commodities that are perfectly excludable and perfectly rival in consumption. Uh, but for some commodities, we may not be so sure how, how much rival in consumption they are or how perfectly excludable they are. So you should view this table as a spectrum where some commodities are on the edges of the table and some commodities might be closer uh, to the middle. Uh, we, can, we could look at some controversial examples and we, we could argue whether a particular commodity is uh, a private good, public good, common resource or natural monopoly. Let's look at an uh, example. Um, for example, radio service. Where would we put radio service in this table? Is radio service excludable? We may think that if radio service is available uh, for free, without any password protection, if you don't need a special receiver to get a radio signal, we could say that radio service is non-excludable. Is radio service a rival in consumption or not? It depends on whether we uh, create any congestion or whether the fact that we are receiving radio service prohibits others from getting clear service. Um, with radio service, we might say that it is non-rival or non-rival non non in consumption. Uh, but maybe with, let's say, wireless internet, we could conclude that wireless internet is common resource if it is uh, available without any password protection. But if the amount of downloading that we do prevents other people from downloading uh, internet content. Okay, so maybe with wireless internet, depending on the exact situation, on our beliefs, we could place internet, uh, wireless internet in this category or maybe in this category. Okay, um, so generally when some commodities are non-excludable, they're available for, uh, effectively for free, a free rider problem arises because people can consume the commodity without paying for it. Uh, in, that, in that case, consumers don't want to pay for the supply of, uh, of the commodity and perhaps free market would not provide this commodity at all. Even though there is a demand, there are consumers who clearly want to consume uh, uh, and receive benefit from consuming the commodity, 
everybody wants to consume it for free and suppliers might not be willing to supply, uh, supply the, uh, the commodity. If there is no possibility of uh, charging consumers for their usage, maybe the government could step in and provide the service for free. Kind of, let's step back and think back to chapter 10. In chapter 10, we assumed that it was, it was possible for the government to regulate the um, uh, number of drivers on the road or the uh, usage of uh, clean air. So the government could impose a tax, a corrective tax on the amount of pollution caused. If that's not possible, uh, the government might choose to provide the service uh, for free and uh, without relying on free markets to provide uh, this commodity. In that case, the government must do a cost-benefit analysis. It must compare the one-time costs of, of providing the service with the, the benefits received by all members in the society uh, from consuming the, the service. You can think that uh, cost-benefit analysis could be very difficult uh, to conduct um, because there are no price tags on, uh, attached to the commodity. Um, the government would have to ask consumers how much they are willing to pay for the com how much uh, they value consuming the commodity. <coughs> and generally, if the government asks consumers about their valuation, consumers might have an incentive to lie. They, uh, uh, if consumers are afraid that the government would uh, 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 ask them to pay something, they would not report their willingness to pay uh, accurately. Similarly, the government and even individual consumers might, might be unsure about uh, the value of uh, life, um, the value of consumers' time, the aesthetics of uh, public good projects, and so on. So if the government is making a decision about the size of its military, um, the availability of public sirens, and so on, uh, <coughs> the government faces issues in um, uh, estimating these uh, benefits um, and it may not be able to ask individual consumers about their valuation. So to sum up, anytime a commodity is non-excludable, we can have uh, the free uh, riding problem. Um, if in addition the commodity is rival in consumption, so we have a common resource, we can have a, a, tragedy, a tragedy of uh, the commons because the com commodity is non-excludable so that people want to use a lot of the commodity and in addition the commodity is rival in consumption so that everybody uses too much of the commodity and as a result too little is available for others and so these resources might be explo uh, exploited more than uh, to their efficient uh, level, right? And this story of uh, the tragedy of the commons is really the, the story of a negative externality studied in uh, chapter 10. Too much uh, of uh, clean air is being used, too much of road space is used by um, selfish drivers. Uh, <coughs> to summarize, Anytime uh, goods are non-excludable, anytime the market doesn't provide clear price tax for a commodity, we would have a problem uh, uh, between, uh, uh, if we wanted to match providers and consumers. And uh, we would have a problem deciding on the uh, efficient amount of uh, the commodity uh, provided. Um, in that case, the government fi can fix the problem by uh, providing the commodity uh, itself instead of relying on free markets. And, and 
uh, solve the efficiency pr uh, problem. Um, as a final note, here I want you to think that uh, the government could only care about efficiency of the solution. Um, uh, you know, when, when the government decides to provide the commodity itself instead of relying on the markets, that only achieves the efficient output level, maybe the, the efficient uh, uh, cost per unit of the commodity produced. Um, but this solution doesn't tell us anything about who pays for the service. Um, if we cared about fairness in the society, so if we wanted to uh, assign the costs of the commodity to users um, based on their value of consumption, we would have a different problem. Um, using the ideas in this chapter, um, we cannot, there, uh, there is no telling how to uh, allocate the cost of providing the service to uh, different users. Uh, in chapter 10, it was assumed that uh, we knew the externality effect of a unit of pollution. In chapter 11, on the other hand, uh, we, uh, we look more, more generally at commodities where it is unclear what uh, the costs of uh, providing and benefits of um, providing the commodities are.